You're listening to DraftKings Network. Prime Big Deal Days are here with two days of big savings exclusively for Prime members. You'll feel like a VIP. Right this way. Your hair dryer deal is waiting. Sweet. Deals from clothes to electronics. It's on Prime Big Deal Days October 11th and 12th. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugatz Podcast. I don't think that energetically on this Tuesday morning that we've started exactly the right way because right before the microphones and cameras went on, Stugatz is yelling at his computer. Yeah, He's telling an NFL team to bleep off because when they were no good... The people who play on that team would have loved to have been on God Bless Football. <laughs> but now that Dan Campbell's team is good, Dan Campbell doesn't have time for God Bless Football. Man Campbell, who was born in these streets. Yeah. I actually tried to book him for the main show, not God Bless Football. And the answer, and it was a quick answer, the answer was no. He's- that drives me crazy. You have been lousy, your organization, for decades. And now you're finally relevant and you're finally good. And I want to get Dan Campbell on. I want to get a coach on. Dan doesn't even want to talk to the coaches. He doesn't like talking to coaches, although this coach I think he might like. And they say, no, go bleep yourselves. I mean, seriously, I can't stand when teams do that. I can't stand when media relations staffs do that. I hate it. I imagine that all your pitches always involve the main show. Even if they're never going to actually be on the main show, just say, yeah, come on the Mike main Ryan, show. Mike Ryan, why did I you hook him in with Dan? Well, Mike, I mean. why? Well, why? I, I am I'm mortified that Stugatz does all of this. What do you mean? Including, up to and including, telling the Lions to bleep off because Dan Kim, who's very busy right. and has a lot of requests, <laughs> yeah. that doesn't have time to just pal Who was around. asking last year, though? Stugatz was. Yep. Nah, it's just Stugatz last no, year. No, no, he's a popular coach. Dan Campbell had no shortage of media availability. Nah, Chris is right. I was the only one asking last year. No one was asking <laughs> no last year. Now everyone's asking, and last, they say no. Last year yeah. they were in hard knocks. That's wow. not true. Wow. Oh, yeah, the kneecaps thing. Yeah. They haven't done anything yet, Dan Whoa. Campbell. You haven't done anything Boom. yet. Boom. You haven't done You didn't make the playoffs. You won nine games. Big deal. <laughs> didn't make the playoffs. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I don't think you can say haven't done anything when when I just did. That is the worst franchise <laughs> in the history of football. Is it one playoff win in 40 years? Yeah, 1991, they won a playoff game. At one, mm-hmm. In 40 years. In, in the salary cap and equity. That team has been bad for a long time, and we all know now watching them, no, they're good now. They're, if they're healthy, that's a good football team. Eh. I, okay, yeah. you guys might not think so. Big gulf between good and great. Okay, yeah. but mm-hmm. but that's doing something at a franchise that's that bad. The standard can't just be, hey, they're one of the five best teams in the NFL right now. They have to be number one today. I have to think of them as the 49ers. I have to think of them today the way I think of the Chiefs. Like, give them a minute to get there. They've been bad for 50 years. Well, they can have their minute, and in that minute they have, come on, God bless football or this show. Right. Once you get there, blow us off. Not there yet, buddies. Yep. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we're not big enough anymore to get Man Campbell on the show. You should really be the one that's insulted here, not to yeah. God's name. Yeah. Yep, yeah. you should be. I use your name. Yeah, I mean, call him directly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Call him right now. Mm-hmm. Call him right get now. Get him on the phone. Exactly Seriously, right. call exactly. Dan Campbell right now. Mm-hmm. It's a good time to call a head coach. Yep. Stugatz can get Adam Gase right now. Maybe. If you if if you want him, I don't have access to the mighty Campbell. Um, I want to backtrack for a second though, because this isn't where I was expecting to start. We started there because Stugatz was mad at his Sorry. computer and yeah. the energies in here were bad. Right. But they were already kind of bad because we've got legitimate tension at the heart and soul of Miami sports media. <laughs> I want to get with Greg Cody into a conversation about Barry Jackson of the Miami Herald, an old-timey journalist, if ever there was one. Barry Jackson is having a meltdown on Twitter, (laughs) arguing with a really bad fan base to argue with, which is the University of Miami football fan base. And I have never seen Barry Jackson, who's been in this market for, I'm going to say, 40 years? 40 years writing about the teams. Always professional. Always objective, like not highly opinionated, (laughs) tends toward fairness and facts, does it the correct way. 
He has now been dragged into the sewer, and he is coming out of the sewer throwing haymakers. I am stunned that old-timey <laughs> Barry Jackson it's awesome. is, is <laughs> insulting the UM fan base. It started with this. This was, And I aired yesterday. I failed as a journalist. <laughs> this piece of paper was on my computer all day yesterday. It was handed to me by Taylor, Nick's Taylor. That's the tweet. I saved it. It's one of my favorites. That is Barry Jackson unhinged giving no, opinions when no, that's not his no, job. No, but this that's is not. Great. No, no, wait a minute. This is not unhinged. We'll get to unhinged. Oh, there's more. No, no, no. Uh, this was uh, on my. No, no. This is the beginning of this. <laughs> Yesterday on my computer, and I failed in not getting to this because I wanted to do four full hours on this. <laughs> this is the last of the old school sports journalist dinosaurs. Been doing it well, kicking ass, and fairly in this market. For 40 years, and one of the strangest people I've ever met. <laughs> Unnecessary. <laughs> Strange can be good. Uh, yeah. Unique? Yeah, unique. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. better. Unique. Unusual? Fair. That's worse. Yeah. Peculiar. Are that's you saying better. it's a, you're calling Barry Jackson fair or Dan's word I fair? I think unusual is a fair. I, okay, strangest sounds pejorative. Fair enough. I retract it. My apologies. I don't mean it as disparagement. I've known Barry Jackson since he was a very young man. He's an unusual young man. And his peculiarities, I would say, make him exceptional at that job. Not, I, not good at it, exceptional at it. I've met about seven people that have written for the Miami Herald. None of them are normal. Yeah. No, no, but so I'm saying something. <laughs> Thank you. I'm saying something where I tell you in my history at the Miami Herald, there have been fewer more unusual than one Barry Jackson. He's a weirdo, Dan. You're I'm good. not going to yeah. do it that Let's way. Let's move on. I'm That's not, pejorative. I'm not. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> okay, I don't want to do weirdo, but what I'm telling you is this is not the escalation. This is just the beginning. After what I called yesterday, and I welcome back the UM fan base yesterday, because I proclaimed that. There have been seven of them. <laughs> but I proclaimed that Georgia Tech game the worst of them. I could have said it seven times in my life and been kind of right. But they're objecting because they're hurt today, UM fans. They're hurt because they did the dumb thing. They lost for being dumb. Yeah, like they, Miami gets laughed at a lot, but it's not like that. It's, you get laughed at because you lose, but it's not because you lost because you did it to yourself because you're a fool, because you're going to lose in the most embarrassing fashion. So, guys, I was conjuring a play from 50 years ago in, in the Meadowlands because <laughs> to lose like that is echoing stupidity. It stains your program. Like, people remember it years later. And it's worse than dumb because it's dumb rooted in arrogance. The idea that you're not going to kneel in the victory formation, the idea that you're going to run the ball just to do what, to spite who – uh, it, to be a lineman, to be it, Mario Cristobal's a former lineman, right. to out tough you. I'm yeah. going to out tough you. Absurd. Okay, but that's not the masculinity that that's drenched in is secondary. The stupidity is what's amazing. Mm -hmm. Because they had the game and they lost a one game. And we can argue about stakes. I mean, I can't. Of course, the championships that they lost are worse for stakes. But country laughing at you because you're dumb? And Miami's been made a lot. They've made a lot of fun of Miami over the years of this program, persecution complex, and actually persecuted. It doesn't get to be because they're idiots. It's not because it's because they they show me up. They're too arrogant. They win too much, and they're bold about it. How often does Miami get to get laughed at like this for just being the laughing stock of the sport because you did something that wasn't smart? I think I hit all the right notes in terms of what the fans wanted yesterday, but also no one notices he does that if they get the call right. Yeah. Not a single person <laughs> is calling Mario Cristobal an idiot unless they were paying attention to every single play in that game. We'd, we'd touch on it, that he should have knelt there if they get the call right, but they didn't. Yeah, you're right. That's dangerous next time he needs to kneel the ball. Right. That's all we're saying. One person is saying it maybe. Maybe. Mike is right about this. Okay. Yes. Well, yes. this it's just it's just odd to me that I have to have more accountability than the ACC officials who when asked yesterday to clarify what happened there because they flatly got the call wrong. They got it wrong while it happened. They got it wrong after a review. They still haven't said anything. Yeah, Cheney's elbow was on the ground. It should his not elbow, have been... his shoulder, yeah. and credit to Georgia Tech doing what they had to do in slippery conditions to make bad officials think about it. It should have never gotten to that point. We all agree he should have knelt. But also, you would have never noticed if they got the call right. To your point, if he fumbled, but they then knocked down 
the the would be touchdown pass. I think he would have been asked afterward. Did you think about kneeling? Uh, so th- that would have come up, I think. But but you're right. They got the call wrong. It doesn't matter. They're a laughing stock nationally because of the way they lost. They could have lost thirty to three, and it wouldn't have been nearly the controversy. To Scott's point, one person did talk about it. Tim Hasselback, who did color for the game, he noticed before even the fumble, before the play happened. Ah. Uh. Down in the ball. He you, wins. you guys do understand, yeah. though, the reason – before I get to this Barry Jackson thing, because Barry Jackson cares about this market. He's seen a lot. He's a historian. He's a local historian. He cares about the program, too. I think he's a he's a hurricane, isn't he? He went to the University of Miami. Mm-hmm. And also, Stugatz learned some of the shit that I learned about journalism near the University of Miami, where the fans don't want you to do journalism. Just cover the team and support the team and root for the team. And when the team is getting beat up nationally – don't pile on. Support uh, the team. Fans also don't know what they don't know because I, I'm sure they'd all appreciate an update on Mesidor's injury. They're not getting one because of the song and dance that people have to have to perform when covering college athletics because there's so much control. But, Mike, what is happening? The reason that I say this feels worse for UM fans than any loss in program history is because you're sitting here saying the totally accurate thing. Hey – that's not a fumble. Everyone can see that call is wrong in the technological age. And you pleading that gets you laughed at because you could have knelt, you idiot. Like, you you sound like a loser. Sound like a loser. The fumble, all you had to do was kneel and you wouldn't have had the fumble. Yeah, that makes it worse that you allowed the position for the referees to take the game from you because you're a fool. Yes. Miami never gets laughed at there. And, and that's why I'm saying that one felt worse. When you go to bed at night, you're like, oh, I don't, even if I got a winning argument, I've got a losing argument because my coach didn't kneel. If this thing doesn't work out for Mario Cristobal, if, if his coming back to UM to bring back the U and save football down here <laughs> ends up not working. It's too early for that, by the way. I know, but if He's that cooking. happens, his epitaph is, we should have taken a knee. That's what's on his UM tombstone. Eight years from now, out. this game is going to be yes, a thing. Yes, yes. No oh, they don't have to if wait If he doesn't correct years. it, that's what Greg is saying. If right. he doesn't get it right, that's what people will remember. And he's right about that. Hey, it's Mike Ryan. This football season, do what I do. Pair your national obsession with a Miller Lite. I make it Miller time all football season long. So many great memories made only better by that crisp, clean finish. That triple hops brewed Miller Lite. From kickoff to the final whistle, you just can't go wrong with a Miller Lite in your hand. It's the only light beer with a taste worthy of our national obsession. Because what's the point of having a beer if it doesn't taste like, well, beer? And I get all the taste that I crave without the calories. That's a big one. Because football and beer, those games are long. Sometimes you want to have more than one. You want to be less filled, but you want to have your taste buds fulfilled. It's only got 96 calories, folks. 3.2 carbs per 12-ounce serving. That's pretty good. That's amazing. That is Miller time. Make it Miller time. All season long. Get Miller Lite delivered right to your door. Visit MillerLite.com slash Dan, where you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Don Lebatard. Did you watch me at NC State? <laughs> I was all ACC. <laughs> I don't have necessarily the mobility, but no one can see over the line like me. <laughs> M- Michael, the ACC Network job is a good job. It's a stable I'm job. I'm ready to pack it in. I've got a lot of good football left in me. My footwork is underrated. <laughs> I can step up in the pocket with the best of them. <laughs> no one can skate in the field like me. But wouldn't it be nice to be around the family more often and not have to worry about any injuries? Babe, just give me one more season. Still got Tell you what, I'm not going to therapy. I'm not. Therapy is not happening. Sorry. You need to work on you. you There's know- one person pulling the rope for this family right here, and it's Mike Glennon. <laughs> This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats. I will tell you, like, man, Mike, Mike has been an unusual place on this show where he's not a journalist and he's really, he's really in the program, like cares about it. Golden Cane. Wants his daughter raised in the community of 
of that is raising his family in Miami, th almost through and around that program. So he cares about it a little more than Tony, who's in his garage with his wife, listening to the end of the UM game on the radio, on the radio, and he's just stopping his car and telling his wife he will not get out because Joe Zagacki has him in his embrace. Uh -huh. And Tony is never... <laughs> Mike, gr Mike grew up on this, but Tony is new to this particular party. Here's the problem. I was on my way home, and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to watch it on my phone. I'm going to go old school. I'm going to ah, listen to Joe Z. I'm going to see Tony. the sights and the sounds of Kane's football. Right? So him and DBJ, there's about a minute left. DBJ throws off his headsets in celebration. Hey, we're good. I'm going to go down and talk to the guys. I'll see you in a bit. Two seconds later, uh, the fumble. Joe Z was alone. Joe Z was alone by himself. <laughs> throws it to Josh Darrow. Where's my like, partner? He throws it to Josh Darrow on the side. And Josh's like, yeah, I think that was a fumble. I don't know, Joe. So at that point, I'm rounding the corner, about to get into the garage of my apartment building, which is 27 stories of concrete. So the moment you get into that garage, you're going to lose the signal. So I'm kind of like half in, half out. And my wife's like, why aren't we going? I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. This never happens. Something is about to happen here. Two plays later, they go in for a touchdown. And I'm sitting there at the open of my apartment just like, I can't believe this just happened. She's like, can we go now? I'm like, yeah, okay, first. It oh, just kept going. God. Stunning but that I you just stayed wow. there. I, I Didn't never, stick around I, for the post game. I, I, no, never I, have, I, couldn't. I never have QAM reception when I pull into my garage. It's like, oh, I'm listening to it again. That it's <laughs> That's uh, never. AM radio no longer <laughs> works in my you. garage. That's correct. Occasionally, q -Pub leads <laughs> in, yes, too. Yes, a little bit of that. <laughs> Depending on what part yes, of the year we're in. That is <laughs> Why does that happen, by the way? That's crazy, right? <laughs> because we share airspace, I'm going to assume. I'm going to assume because Cuba's not that far. No, my my entire childhood was spent with like, why are those Spanish people chattering in the background? That is not, that is clearly not for American air. And it's pro-Castro propaganda. What's happening here? <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably not something that they get elsewhere in the country, I don't think. What did Barry say? Yeah, I'm getting there. The I, weirdo. I, thank, yeah. thank you, Billy. But I just, the context I want to place here, because Barry Jackson, who I'm not going to say is weird, and I take I back that I said strange. Pejorative. And I'm just going to make it un un unique, unique, okay. a unique person. Whatever you Because said. Greg Cody, I've been wanting to get him in this conversation, and Greg Cody has to be careful. This is a colleague. There are only like seven people still in the Miami Herald Sports Department, correct? Yeah, yeah I think exactly seven. And Barry's been around a long time, as you said. He's great at what he does. He's an old school reporter. And what's funny to me is even in the quote you're about to read, there's like a nugget of reporting in there. You know, the idea that, that he spent, he's threatening his assistant coach. He's the original information man. He's born of the Woj and Schefter stuff yeah. and has never left the market. He's done it very well here. And so this is what he releases from an information account. <laughs> Barry Jackson's still relevant in the modern age because he's good at the information game. Instead of spending off-season sending emails threatening his staff if they talked more to local writers, Cristobal should have worked on simple math instead. <laughs> and then here's the killer. Three words, a haymaker from the sky. What a joke. <laughs> Stuck the landing, look, man. Look at the timestamp. If you see the timestamp, that is someone that went to the school at 11.33 at night after that play, yeah. getting emotional, making – the non Neil about three different things. Okay, so Look at those views though. Yes. Well, here's the thing about all of this, okay? And this is the dirty secret. <laughs> Greg Cody, I've been I've been smoking out Greg Cody as a homer for a while now. And this is the truth about Barry Jackson, me, and Greg Cody. We care about that program. We're just not allowed to show you. <laughs> We've got to hide it at every turn. We've got to be objective. God damn it, they've been coming after Miami for 40 years. <laughs> and, and every once in a while, when Barry Jackson, because he's talking about having grave stuff going on in his life as a reason for this outburst. And this is an outburst by him. He does not do this. Not just this one tweet, by the way, because that's what people are probably thinking if they're just following along now. Go through his replies. He is brawling with Everyone. And I mean... It's a brawl. Everyone. He's, he is brawling with the internet. This seems unwise, okay? Because Adam Cohen writes in, uh, LOL, loser? You're hilarious. I'm not the journalist taking obvious personal shots at the UM program because you feel small. Calling me a loser won't change the fact that Mario won't let your ass into the door. Barry Jackson. Hey, moron. <laughs> <laughs> I love this, Barry. I mean... <laughs> seems measured so far. 
Just give him a shot. We haven't heard the rest yet. Oh, but I love it. Let him flow. <laughs> this is great. Everything I tweeted is accurate and not disputed by UM. So there are the facts. And I still have my credential, and that ain't changing. Go back in your hole, weasel. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. weasel. Oh, wow. Damn. Go back in your hole. Weasel. Interesting. Somebody else writes, you are such a D-bag. I'm shocked anyone pays to read anything you write. Barry Jackson's reply, shocked anyone gives you food and water. <laughs> wow. We should hire this guy. <laughs> That's a good retort. That's excellent. Well done, Barry. B-Jack on the prowl. Adam Cohen writes again, glad you're back oh, to just... Cohen guy. Glad you're back to just tweeting info instead of taking spiteful shots at Mario on the program. Such a bad look for you. Barry Jackson replies, unfollow, loser. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> and finally, oh. Austin writes in, Debbie Dietz, this person should absolutely not be covering sports as a journalist based on these tweets alone. Because Barry Jackson had written, don't mean to sound petty with below, but the broader point made to me by a UM staffer is Mario spends too much time worrying about unimportant stuff. And this email below came after a positive article about UM. Hopefully they'll bounce back. Miami is a better place when UM wins. And so Austin writes, this person should absolutely not be covering sports as a journalist based on these tweets alone. Get lost. You nitwit. Wow. <laughs> nitwit. That's oh, a haymaker. Yeah. Top rope. That's, haymaker. That's just a sampling. He's, Adam went too far. <laughs> I think You're he's right. yeah. I think Barry might still be going. <laughs> and uh he, look, the food and water line was a bar. Oh, it was yeah. great. That was a bar. That was a good line. Yeah, 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 but yeah. this is not a good look for Barry. I disagree. Can we just have a scroll on the screen of Barry Jackson that just refreshes his screen? <laughs> Live as, scroll. As the content. <laughs> hey, look, man, he's got to keep up in the content game. And if it means getting a little coarser. To keep up with the kids, Greg Cody will, Greg Cody will swim in that slum. We'll just occasionally throw some up on the screen yeah. to satiate. Only if someone puts up their ring finger as their middle finger, though. <laughs> <laughs> the, B Barry's in a difficult position right now because in what he writes, he is not a, a columnist by title. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. Why does it say go to hell on the screen? And who, uh, with who, no punctuation. Who is this directed at? Okay. I, don't bombard me. All right. That's fine. Just scroll on through. I can't read it while I'm doing the show. Say what you were saying, Greg. Uh, Barry, in what he writes, is not a columnist by title. And so, therefore, there's very little opinion or certainly no strong course opinion in what he writes. So this is an alter ego for him. He's not limited on social media to not give opinions, and so he's running full blast. Um, you know, and, and the Herald, he, he's a clicks horse for the Herald. I mean, he's a monster. You, you stumbled horse. on that. You what happened? You stumbled on that How word. Are you, are you sure did. horse I'm, is what you meant I'm, there? I'm, I'm, I'm choosing my words carefully. <laughs> By the way, quick update. Horse. He told Adam to go to hell. I mean, this Adam. Adam really was <laughs> his That's personal, him and Adam. He's a click whore. <laughs> I, I didn't yeah. mean click whore. I was thinking of another word besides horse that was a little more coarse than horse. Of course, of course. Yeah. Um, Donkey? Barry's great at what he does. You? The Herald loves him. My boss at the Miami Herald loves Barry and is not going to rein him in. I guarantee you the, the boss is not telling is not telling Barry, hey, tone really? it down online. I'm, I'm not so sure about that. Delayed. I'm pretty I mean, sure. you, would, you, would, you would know better than I, but... I've heard from a couple of people that everyone's kind of wondering aloud. And we also have to, once again, mention that Barry himself has said that he's got some stuff going on. But UM, a fellow journalist, everyone's a little confused by this look right now. Okay, but I would say that, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Because this, I don't think, is a fight we've seen from Barry Jackson in public before because he is very professional, this is out of character. So when he volunteers within a tweet, I think by way of explanation, hey, I'm dealing with the death of my parents and my own health issue. I'm not taking any shit from anyone anymore. It's, it's a real uncaging. It's a real, he is coming out free and fighting the internet as a way of, I'm done taking all of these beatings I've taken because I'm a fact-based journalist in a time that doesn't treasure those. 
anymore. You know how hard it is to make your... Imagine trying to be Schefter or Woj, but not quite being Schefter or Woj and having to make, in the, one market. make the fight in the information <laughs> business. And there's that damn Andy Slater, and he's got all the police logs. Ah, uh, scoops. But he also does... I think at the heart of this, we've made the analogy, the married couple that has a huge blowout argument over the, the missing sock in the laundry. And that's really what's at the heart of this for Barry. Covering the University of Miami, covering college athletics, as you see Lincoln Riley over at USC impose his will, they have such a control over messaging, and they don't have to adhere to collectively bargained uh, injury protocols when it comes to reporting stuff. In order for you to maintain your relationships there and be a good reporter, you have to play a game that is different than pro sports, and it means swallowing a lot. It means not reporting things in order to get to the reporting. And with this particular staff, Mario Cristobal is a little bit more involved and wants these closely guarded things to be state secrets. I can understand Barry's frustration, but he is making the kneel about something that it is not. This episode of the Dan Levitard Show with Stugatz is brought to you by KFC's new hot and spicy wings. Get fired up this fantasy season with eight pieces of spicy marinated hand-breaded wings for just $4.99. Are you kidding me? They're a can't-miss call for whatever the fantasy gods throw your way. In the midst of a managerial hot streak, keep it rolling with KFC's new hot and spicy wings. Did you just assemble the worst lineup in fantasy history? Who cares? You can get eight KFC new hot and spicy wings for $4.99 right now. Marinated in spice, hand-breaded to perfection. KFC's new hot and spicy wings are here. Eight pieces for just $4.99. It's finger licking good. Hey guys, it's Tony. U.S. Cellular is introducing US Mode. It's like airplane mode, but for people. You got that? Cool. It's a way to set up your phone so it doesn't get in the way of people really being with each other. Block distractions and make way for a real connection. Give it a try. Visit U.S. Cellular in-store or online, and they'll help set up your phone to US Mode for free. Really, for free. Even if you're not a customer, they'll still do it. That's how good U.S. Cellular is. Built for superior 5G connection and real human connection. U.S. Cellular. Built for us. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Don Lebatard. I read his lips and it sounded like he was saying, what? You want to f- fight me now? Sp- uh, but, but I'm telling you, if you look, we can play a game right now. The lips look the same on fight you and failure. Watch my lips. Well, I'm going to turn off my mic. No, you I guys just look yeah, at your I like I'm going to send one of these two. Like and the and I want you guys to tell me if I'm go. saying fight you yeah, yeah. or failure. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. Stugats. Why are your ideas always so bad for the podcast? It's a Big swings, Grace. Is this a character that you have now? Here we go. Here we go. Do it again. No. Fight you. Fight that was you. Fight, or maybe yeah. you can't tell. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God! We got to the bottom of it. <laughs> this is the Don Lebatar show with the Stugats. Let me ask you this question as a journalist, Greg Cody, because going back many years ago to when Jimmy Johnson and the people who birthed Mario Cristobal. They didn't want us around the program either because Leonard Conley would get suspended for something undisclosed. And I'm reporting what he did, that he stole a wallet from somebody. And they don't need that or want that around their program 20, 30 years ago. Mario Cristobal comes from that and now gets eight years, $80 million of security. And his job is to protect all of the Miami stuff from everybody. He's got no use for journalism. What does he need? Barry Jackson... Of course he's going to get mad that his assistants are telling Barry Jackson anything. Like, that's... Mario Cristobal is crazy about winning, Stugatz. He's a lunatic. He's, then take a name. He's cu- <laughs> well, he's, he's crazy. He's crazy about talent acquisition, which brings you the wins. Oh, yes. And the thought is, if I can try to figure out why he's obsessive compulsive about messaging and what's out there, and not just what the media is reporting, but what players' parents are tweeting, it's that all of this can affect talent acquisition. All of this can affect the main goal of having so many good players on your team that you can navigate the occasional, I I mess that up with my game management game. You just overwhelm with talent. So I think that's what is at the heart of it because recruiting is so much built on perception that he wants to control the perception. There were a ton of recruits at that game and the laughter that echoed was about Miami being stupid. Miami throwing away a game. Hey, undefeated seasons are hard. There's what, like eight undefeated teams right now? It's And we're only in October. We're not even mid-October. It's hard to be undefeated right now. The margins can be just that. 
Can we talk for a second about the pressure cooker of what he inherits at the moment that Miami gets in the big money college game where they're like, hey, coach, eight years, 80 million. Where'd that come from? Miami's never had the money to get the free agent. Now he's got the responsibility. Hey, coach, you played here. Bring the program back. And you lose one yourself when you are crazed, obsessed with winning and succeeding at this. Because, I mean, man, I'm not storytelling here when I tell you this is Cuban Miami Stugatz. This, this person was raised to succeed in this market, in this city, came and took his dream job and is obsessed in a way that's deeply unhealthy. But where he's doing all his work on making sure they win, and he's the reason they lost. You're doing the appropriate backstory on Mario Cristobal, but you're forgetting one major yeah. thing. He had gone on, he had become a head coach, he went to FIU, he got fired. Yeah. And he had fired to, from FIU. And he had to reboot it because he had a... a it, <laughs> that's, it was that's a, correct. It wasn't a great move. He had a beef with Pete Garcia. He goes over. Everyone to come, does, Mike. He goes yeah, over so to true. Alabama. <laughs> so true. Put it on the poll, please, Juju. Does everyone have a beef with Pete Garcia? But this is a, it's so it's random. True. This it's is true. where I think most of this is coming from, though, because he learns how to be a successful coach because he knew what success looked like as a player, but he didn't know what it took to be a staffer on a successful coaching staff. He was a grad assistant for a national title ah. team in Miami, but he had to deal with that failure, and he reshapes himself as a professional at the knee of Nick Saban, who is operating inside of Tuscaloosa and has full autonomy over what goes out in the media space. No Barry Jacksons in Tuscaloosa. No, no. They that get, doesn't exist in no, Tuscaloosa. No, because they can, they can totally cut somebody out, and they don't have a corporate uh, parent like the Miami Herald to back you up. Uh, all right, Miami, The Miami Herald can exist without the Miami Hurricanes football program. In Tuscaloosa, they need that program humming for right. everybody to eat. So that's really, as much as you want to say Miami and, and control shaped them in Columbus and even going back to being a Cuban man, and, and he's almost military in his approach, a lot of this is Saban too. All I'm saying to you is that Miami got into the big-time game where, what, 15 or 20 programs can play? The place of the $80 million coach for eight years will guarantee the money. Right? There aren't – like, once you make the game that purposefully about it's just going to be dollars – and Miami gets in the game, splashy, with not a lot of success Splash. in 20 years. In 20 years, not really, and by reputation, can only be in this class, Stugatz, because of what they did a quarter century ago. Right. It's the only reason they're invited. Hey, you want to be as a brand Notre Dame? You want to be as a brand Texas? The, they're, they're bigger than the things in the ACC based on things from 25 years ago. But who cares about the expectations of the weight of the world on Mario's shoulders? Like he's it, Dan. It's his dream job. He's living oh, exactly know, where he I wants know. to live, and he's paid eighty Stugatz. million dollars. Fix right. the program. Okay. Yes, take a knee. Uh, yes, absolutely, Stugatz. I'm only telling you the backstory. I know because I find fascinating how much this must hurt him because he cares more than anyone listening to this. Like he cares more. That more all, than Barry? More ca he cares <laughs> that more. That offensive lineman crying seemed to care a lot. Yeah. He cares more than any and all of you about this. And so I just assume that those people hurt the most, especially when you can this specifically put the blame in one place. I can't imagine the ravaging that this human being is doing to himself. I don't know how forgiving he is of himself. Did you watch uh, the presser I, yesterday? I, I, I saw they went upbeat. Like they went, to, I can't, you know, the guys. But he are, also took full, I mean,. Uh, he, he, he took full to. responsibility yeah. over it. He had to. Yeah, I mean, he did well, it What else could he do? Well, no, he, he had to, Mike. Yeah. That's part of what he I was mean, getting beaten up about. He could have done what a lot it. of fans are doing, which is blame the refs. He could have. No. I'm telling you, there. I'm happy that he came out with the approach, which is you just you just have to eat that one. And I understand you want to bring the program back. Take a knee. Long view here. It's not about one individual result. It's about stacking talent for it's him. It's so hard, though. This is what's hard. I mean, if if you look at the fandom of what we're talking about, because Stugatz, Greg Cody as the original homer in the journalism market. 
birthed all of the things that this stupid show is so that Mike could try to do journalism about this program from deeply inside of it, Stugat. It's like he, he's navigating this line between I'll be an information guy, but you guys do know that I'm paying to be a part of this club. Too inside, one might say. Some might say. It yeah. sounds like it to me sometimes when he's when he's got to be careful about how critical he is because he cares about these people. Didn't sound like he was careful yesterday. Well, no, I prodded him into that because... Uh, I mean, People don't understand when the criticisms that I'm like bought and paid for and not hard enough. I go into these rooms. I I see Dan Radakovich after I criticize him on the air, and he knows. Like I see Coach Cristobal after I do that and get unfairly clipped by our own social media, <laughs> where it seems like you're I'm telling in, him you're walking F you, into the room not. with the athletic director, and people know he knows that you have said he has been terrible at his job, and I've called him a suit in a game that uh, is among power brokers that are pretty useless. Why are we feeling Mark sorry Lord? for Mario Cristobal today? I'm exactly. so confused. Like, you, you lost a game you should have won. That right. happens every week in college football. Half the coaches in America that. lose every exactly weekend. Right. Yeah, they, they deal with it. That's a yeah. fact. Well, I'm glad you pointed that out because like I don't think there's... Occasional tie? No. I, I totally miss anybody no, feeling college, bad for no. Mario Cristobal yeah. on this show. No, I don't. He, I haven't, he brought I, it on himself. I, yeah. Is anyone feeling bad for Mario Cristobal? Seems like Dan is. I do. Yes, I do. But... Uh, but this is a lonely position, right? Because I'm just looking at it. I'm like, oh, that dude cares so much. And today you're an idiot. Ouch, that hurts. When what I'm also seeing, this is such a pressure cooker now that Mike Ryan a month in is biting his tongue because Deion Sanders has fixed it. He fixed it like that. What does that say about Cristobal? What does that say? That's where we're putting the standard short view. Arizona State wins, or are we looking three years, five years, build a program, build a business, build something substantive in our market with the Columbus guys, and it's a it's a giant swing or fail. Like it's just it's it's home run or strikeout. But that's part of what made last Saturday very frustrating. That you had a chance to do it quicker than anyone could have imagined because you had an Agreed. undefeated team going to North Carolina playing another undefeated Agreed. team, and possibly they could have found themselves Agreed. in the playoff and, this year. No, but here is why. Here is why, Sugant. I, I feel bad for the human beings who live at the center of the madness we've made of sports. We are all unified in just kneel, you idiot, except when it comes to Kaepernick. Then we're totally divided on it. <laughs> but we, everyone says, don't be an idiot there. And Mario Cristobal just has to eat it. None of us want to be the thing that everyone on the Internet is making fun of. None of us want to be the thing people in football, pro and college, are talking about Saturday and Sunday. Mario Cristobal, at his own doing, was the butt of a giant joke in the pressure cooker, and that's what the money's for. Like, he's got to build the team, but that's why they pay them that way. Because there's a human being at the center of that who cares more than all of you do, feels the pressure of this more than all of you do, and feels the failure of it more than all of you do. And anyone under the burden of that gets my, like, ah, that hurts no matter how much money you're making. Like, that, that feels bad. Uh, damn, but fans want it, and they want it now, and I don't blame them, because you can get it now. Because Kirby Smart goes to Georgia, and Georgia's fixed. Because Nick he Saban goes to Alabama, and Alabama's fixed you're, inside you're of three years, you're, Mike. You're citing examples that didn't do it right away. That didn't do it. Lincoln Riley goes to USC. They're fixed in a year. Yeah, that, in the NIL age, it, it's different. I, I understand what you're saying, but Kirby Smart, people wanted him gone. <laughs> I mean, Nick Saban lost to UL Monroe. There's no forgiving the way they lost that game. It's a stain on Cristobal that's going to last. But before that game, they're 4-0 and ranked number 17, and everybody's loving everything that's happening. If they win at North Carolina in a few days, they're going to be 5-1 and and ranked number 17 again. It could happen. I don't think it will, but it could happen. And, and, and his latest recruiting cycle is very good once again. He hasn't failed. He failed miserably against Georgia but, Tech in the last minute, but he hasn't but failed wait, yet wait, wait, in wait a March. Minute, wait a minute. Like, this is not where we're going to put this standard. It's not what we're going to do. Because uh, it, it is possible that by the end of this season, Colorado will not be fixed. But I will not forget that they started the season thinking that they'd win three and a half games and not be competitive. Mm -hmm. And to this minute, five weeks in, in the pressure cooker, five weeks in, Dion's a success. Hey, Mario, you've had a year and a half. This has to be long viewed, does it not? Like, I, 
It it has to be. Are you building since a program? Since when is the U long view? I mean, I'm, since talk, when? I'm talking about no, since, spent, since they spent eight years. Yeah, they're forced uh, to yeah, be. Eight right. million it's dollars. It's long view because he recruits. Million. No, and they're paying him guaranteed money. Like this isn't this isn't they can afford a buyout. But like, the problem with Mario is has never been recruiting. It's been coaching. So like you can give them two more recruiting cycles. If the problem is coaching, that's still going to be there. The story locally, Billy, him coming from FIU, where he was, you you understand? Lane? I wanted him to be fired from FIU because of coaching. To be perfectly <laughs> honest with you, I was like, okay, you can go. Like you got us to two bowl games, and now we are like a two and ten. Team. He's been frustrating as a game day coach for a long time, and that's not going to change with recruiting <laughs> cycles. It's, it, yeah, it will. The, the hope is you have so much talent that you become an Ed Orgeron team. You win in team. spite of your coach? Yeah. That's not why you pay someone $80 million. What? There's been plenty of national champions that have won in spite of their coach. Bill 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 gets the, the players. Easy part. Right. Game management is the easy part. Apparently not. Not for him. It's the Recruiting's easy part. Recruiting easy. If, if, if I have a coach who can either recruit great or be a great game manager, I'm going to take the recruit guy Guys, at the college stop level. Stop putting us in the class of national contenders. Where we were was I'd kill to lose two games a year and one of them be on my head coach just totally mangling a late game situation. Just give me a 10-win season for the love of God. That's where we've been outside of 2017 for the better part of two decades. That's where we've been. I'll take losing the Utah game that he lost every year. I'll take the occasional Stanford game. I'll even take the Georgia Tech game. Yeah. If by the end of this year you have a season that feels really good and we're on the right track. To Billy's point for his career, he's 71 and 68 as a coach. As a coach. Like the recruiting's great, oh, but game day coaching's important. Who's the, he's not good at it. Who's the coach that's like a really, really bad recruiter but can call a timeout with the best of them? <laughs>